Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Last November I did the netcode analysis of Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered, including a follow-up where I also tested the original Call of Duty for Modern Warfare because many of my viewers said that the remastered version felt worse than the original. To my surprise, I found out that the remastered version of Modern Warfare had indeed more delay than the original, because the developers decided to have the server of the remastered version send just 10 updates per second to the clients, while in the original the server sends 20 updates per second. So the community was not quite happy to hear that and rightfully asked the developers to increase the rates in the remastered version of Modern Warfare. The request for higher rates in Call of Duty is nothing new. However, this time the community was not ignored, as the developers just released a patch where they say that they increased the rate of the server. But they didn't say what the new rate is. So that is what we will have a look at in today's video. But before we do that, we have to take a look at a few networking basics so that you understand the results of my tests. The reason why I include this basic information in every video is that I do not want that someone who is new to those netcode analysis videos must watch another video first to understand what the analysis is about. Also I've noticed that it does not really work to tell your viewers to watch another video first, which then leads to them drawing the wrong conclusions or they simply do not understand the information which I share in the video. Now, if you already know the networking basics from one of my previous videos, then you can use the timecode link inside the description of this video to skip that part. Sadly, I cannot provide you with an annotation anymore, because YouTube decided that the new end screen disables annotations, and I cannot use the cards feature to provide you with a skip function, as a card is not allowed to link to the same video. So thank you YouTube for killing that feature for me. Let's start with the ping. Now, what is that and where does the term come from? If you've seen the movie The Hunt for Red October, then you might remember that scene where Sean Connery gave the order to check the distance to the US submarine with one active sonar ping. The way this works is that your ship sends out an audio signal which then gets reflected by other objects in the water. And on your ship you have microphones which then hear that reflection. If you then measure the time between sending the audio signal and receiving the reflection, then you can calculate the distance between you and the object. The ping that we talk about for network connections is pretty much the same thing. Your device sends an ICMP echo request to another network device like a game server, which then sends an ICMP echo reply back to your device. Now, when you measure the time between sending the request and receiving the answer, then this gives us the ping or round trip time of the data. So the ping tells us how long the data has to travel through the copper and fiber optic cables to reach the other device. And the longer it takes the data to get to its destination, the bigger the difference between what we see on our monitor and what the other players see on theirs. Which is what we call lag. So when I jump, then this information takes some time to reach the server and then the other client. With short distances between the players, this delay or lag is also very short. But when the distance gets bigger, then the clients have to wait longer until they receive an update on what is going on. So the higher your ping, the more you will lag, which leads to a bad experience. But it's not just the player with the high ping that suffers. Depending on how strong the lag compensation is in a game, the high ping player can also give the low ping player a bad experience. But that is a different topic. So the distance between the client and the server defines how long it takes data to travel between them. However, you can't take a map, draw a line between your home and the location where the server is hosted and then calculate your ping based on that distance, because the copper and fiber optic cables take a very different route and the data that you send to the server has to pass through multiple routers before it even reaches the server. So when a router has to forward data, then it always tries to find the best and fastest route. This means that when everything works as it should, then your data will take the shortest route to the game server. However, it can happen that a router either chooses the wrong route or that it has to choose a worse one when the better one is down. Such can then lead to quite big detours for your data, which can result in much higher pings and an increased risk of packet loss since your data might have to pass through many more routers then. So when you always play on the same server and suddenly notice that your ping increased, then this could be caused by the routing. And if this is the case, then you have to call your internet service provider so that they can check their routing tables. If you want to help them to get the issue fixed faster, then you can open the command prompt, type in tracer and the IP of the game server that you have problems with. 
You will then get a list of all the hops between you and the game server, with the pings between you and every of those hops. With that information it will be much easier for your ISP to track down the issue and fix it. So the length of the route that connects the client to the server defines how long it takes data to travel between them. This means that our lag cannot get lower than the ping, since we would have to break the laws of physics to speed up the electrons or photons that are used to communicate with the server. What adds an extra delay on top of the travel time of our data is how frequently we send and receive it. So when we send and receive updates 30 times per second, then there is more time between the updates than when we send and receive 60 updates per second. So by sending and receiving more updates per second, you can decrease the additional delay that is added on top of the travel time of your data. But where is that data coming from? This is where the term tick or simulation rate comes into play, which is how many times per second the game processes and produces data. So when you have a tick or simulation rate of 30, then this will cause more delay than when you have a tick rate of 60, which also allows update rates of 60 Hz then. Now, what kind of options do developers have when it comes to providing servers? One solution is that you pay hosters to set up dedicated servers for your games in their data centers, to which the players then connect to. This means that your game server is running on powerful hardware, the data center provides enough bandwidth to handle all the players that connect to it, and the players are not able to see each other's IP addresses. At least as long as the game does not use a bad peer-to-peer voiceover IP solution. Also, if the developers ensure that all players have more or less the same ping to the game server, then you can avoid that some players have an unfair advantage. The downside of dedicated servers is that if you don't have a game that builds around the idea of having the community run these servers, then the publisher or game studio has to pay for them and they are quite expensive. Another problem is that when you release your game worldwide, then you also need to make sure that you have enough server locations to provide all players with low latency servers. If you don't do that, then you create many hyping players and that is a problem for your entire community, not just the players who don't have servers near them. The other approach is that you simply use the PC or console of one of the players to host the game, which means that he becomes the server. With this solution the game studio does not have to pay for expensive dedicated servers, which must be available in many different regions. This also allows players in remote regions to play with their local friends at relatively low latency. One of the downsides is that the player who is also the server gets an advantage, because he has zero lag, which means that in a first person shooter he will see you before you see him, and he can fire at you before you can fire at him. It is also possible for the host to further exploit this by artificially increasing the ping of all the other players, which is called lag switching. And the host also sees the IP addresses of all the other players that connect to him, which is in my opinion quite a big security concern. Then we also have the problem that all players connect to the host through his consumer grade internet connection, when the worst case he could even use Wi-Fi. This frequently results in a lot of lag, packet loss, rubber banding and an unreliable hit registration. But the most frustrating part of such client hosted matches is that if your host disappears, then the game must choose another player to host the match, which means that the whole game pauses for several seconds until the host migration has finished. So while dedicated servers do not magically provide 100% lag free connections, they still offer the best possible experience in online multiplayer games. So, as you might know, Modern Warfare Remastered as well as Infinite Warfare use a combination of dedicated servers and client hosted matches. In the original Modern Warfare, the client sent 30 updates per second to the game server, while the server sent 20 updates per second to the client. And in a client hosted match, the client sent 30 updates per second to the host, and the host sent 20 updates per second to the clients. So the update rates were the same for dedicated servers and client hosted matches in Call of Duty 4. Now in Modern Warfare Remastered the clients also sent 30 updates per second to the game server just like in the original. However the game server only sent 10 updates per second to the clients, which increased the delay or lag by 50 milliseconds compared to the original. The patch that was just released did change this quite a bit, as the clients now sent 45 updates per second to the game server and the game server sends 20 updates per second to the clients. So the clients now send data more frequently than in the original Modern Warfare. So how about private matches? In November a client sent 30 updates per second to the host and the host sent 10 updates per second to the client. 
The patch also changed the rate at which the clients send data to the host, but sadly the host is still sending just 10 updates per second, which means that the delay will continue to be as bad as before the patch, since the 10 updates per second are nowhere near good enough. But these low update rates do not only increase the delay between players. Since we're talking about a shooter, I think we all agreed that we want at least one update per fired bullet, so that the damage dealt by a bullet can be sent individually. At a send rate of 10 Hz with no packet loss, this means that you cannot have a gun in your game that fires more than 600 rounds per minute, as otherwise you have less updates than fired bullets. This might also help you to understand why you sometimes take too much damage in one frame. This happens when the server must bundle damage of multiple hits and send it to the client in one update. This is an issue that especially Battlefield 4 players will remember from the time before the netcode rework when the game server was also just sending 10 updates per second to the clients, while the game featured guns with a rate of fire that was much higher than 600 RPM. There is a reason why Battlefield and Overwatch have moved to 60Hz as default rate, and why Counter-Strike has always used the default of 64 updates per second. It's not just about the delay, it's also about delivering data individually, shot by shot, hit by hit. Now what effect has this update rate change on the delay that two players experience when they play on the same server? To test this I use a high speed camera, two PCs where each of them has its own fiber internet connection and 144Hz gaming monitors on which the game runs at 91 frames per second because that's the frame rate limit in Modern Warfare and Infinite Warfare. So to measure the delays between the players I point my high speed camera at the monitors and then fire 20 shots with player 2. Inside the high speed recording I then look for the frame where I see that player 2 fired his gun and then I count the frames until I see the gunfire on the monitor of player 1. In addition to this gunfire test I also did two movement tests. In the first one player 2 jumps and I count the frames until I see the player model jump on the monitor of player 1. In the second test player 2 moves to the side and then I count the frames until I see his player model move on the monitor of player 1. So after I did each of these tests 20 times I got an average of 75 milliseconds in the gunfire test, 83 milliseconds in the jump and 86 milliseconds in the walk test. And while it's quite an improvement compared to my original test back in November, it's not really a surprise considering that the server is now sending an update every 50 milliseconds instead of every 100 milliseconds. But there is one thing that is quite interesting. Modern Warfare Remastered now has less delay than Infinite Warfare, despite Infinite Warfare clients sending 100 updates to the game server, but that does not really help much anyway because the rate at which the server sends data is just 20 Hz. So it looks like there is something else going on inside of Infinite Warfare that increases the delay compared to Modern Warfare Remastered. This could be a performance issue on the server or the client. It could also have something to do with the renderer inside of the engine or many other performance related things. But it is definitely interesting that the average delay of Modern Warfare Remastered is now about 20 milliseconds lower than in Infinite Warfare. For the future of Call of Duty I sincerely hope that the developers will finally leave player hosted matches and those low rates behind them. 60Hz in both directions as well as dedicated servers for public and private matches should finally become a standard, like they are in Overwatch. The costs should not really be an issue considering that Call of Duty is still the best selling franchise in the world. The problem is that the players are not demanding this change loud enough. Especially the competitive scene should be very vocal about this considering that the very low server send rate of just 20Hz has a serious impact on the outcome of a firefight. So I hope that you enjoyed this updated netcode analysis of Modern Warfare Remastered and if you like this kind of niche content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. Also if you want to know what I'm currently working on then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook, the links are also in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.